So I would like to ask you about uh, one can notice there's a real presence of death in your work. So what can you say about it? Um, there's, 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 there's a couple of, um, of, of thoughts I would have about that. I, th I think as a young kid, I was just one of those kids that was fascinated by death. I always looked at people and I saw the skulls behind their face. I always saw that. I always saw the bones under their skin. I remember looking at my grandmother's hands, you know, and I loved her. She was an unbelievably gentle, beautiful soul, but I could also see this presence and it fascinated me, which in a way is structure, you know, bones are structure and skin is surface. So it's like this, even as a kid, I sort of always was fascinated by that. And I think, um, and I think most artists probably, um, you know, art is an attempt to stop time or escape time or reflect on time or create another gestalt with time. And time is ultimately death, right? Running out of time, all of this. And, um, but in a, I think in your life, you go through deaths, you know, you go through transitional periods that are deaths, that are, you're letting go of, um, you know, on a molecular level, you're dying and being reborn, right? All throughout. But there are these significant moments. And I think, you know, we were talking, and I think it, it's, it's okay to talk about it, it is, you know, I, with, with, you know, I lost a very, very close friend, someone who was young and who I believed would live forever with me. You know, we would live together and we would change the world. And he was, he was from Liverpool, I'm from Leeds. He was the bridge. He was one of the bridges that took me back to Europe. You know, I'd escaped Europe, I'd, I'd run away from Europe. Escaped is the wrong word, I'd been rejected, actually. I was cast away in my mind. And he sort of brought me back and he was very strong and he was very powerful in ways I wasn't. He was seductive, he was beautiful, he was capable of certain things I'm not capable of. And so, and, and I think, you know, my trajectory uh, ha, as an artist and as a person had been running, 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 fighting, 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 fighting. You know, I, my, my nervous system is, is fight or flight. Anyone who knows me well knows I operate for a long time with run away or fight, you know. And so that way of being and that system had, had taken me on this journey, had taken me a long way from my home and had taken me a long way from my roots and had saved me in many ways but also starts to kill you because you're, you, you, you know, you're, you're living in a way that's not sustainable. You're burning and you're pushing and you're... And I was working in a very fast, intuitive way. My work was just flowing out and I came to America and, I, you know, everything was moving so quickly. At and so moment. that is this? And that is... There's a danger there. There's a danger. I, start to, I was feeling it already. And in a way, when, when my friend died, it was the catalyst for me to realize, you know, he literally died and I needed to die. Also, I needed to, 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 to go past, I needed to let go and I needed to die. I needed to let go of certain things and, and go through this period of mourning and reflection and, and, and taking stock and looking at my children, looking at where I was at, you know, I'd gone on this fucking journey from, you know, eight years old to 40, whatever, without ever really taking stock, just, you know, surviving. And so, um, as, as I slowed down and as, as I went into this kind of, I would, I would say kind of mourning and a kind of uh, unbelievable period of also rebirth, you know, you kind of go through these rebirths, right? But representing but that, this, I was it was a, was a, was clearly my my bridge to doing that. You know, to, you talk to come about back like, to life. Yeah, exactly. You talk about the theatre of death in a way, and 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 I think as an art studio is a kind of theatre of death. I think that's a fantastic analogy. Sometimes it's a theatre of birth, you know, and it's all about birth and more possibilities about that. And sometimes the studio is all about this sense of of of, um, of ending of death of not of being on unable to escape from that. And sculpture is this, you said. Yeah, well, I think sculpture, it's not for, uh, it's, you know, if you look at the monument, the idea of the monument, right, it's, it's, uh, 
it's an image of someone normally who's died or something that's died. It's a, you know, from its origins, sculpture always dealt with the funereal or with past or with the rejection of time. So you look at, um, you know, one of the things that's the most striking about ancient sculpture is it both lives in time and it lives totally out, outside of it. It's always like, astonishing, right? Because a painting, you've already accepted this is a kind of illusion, it's a myth, it's a, yeah. right? Sculpture occupies your space and it occupies physical reality. It's, it's conditioned to the same things, light, space, gravity, right? Touch. Sculpture operates with these. So it's, it's a very, sculpture's very disturbing art because of that, because it's both there and not there, and it outlives you in this eerie way, right? Mm. So to me, sculpture's always done that. You know, if you look at its origins and even how it's used today, and it's interesting that it's, that it, we're very frightened of sculpture today. Sculpture's taken a very strange role, right? Because it, 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 it does something very weird with time and it does something very weird with our understanding of our time.